The end goals then are that gains in, that gains in families connection to school and children's school attachment. Um, we'll get gains in literacy test scores. These are the measurable outcomes, but how do we get there? Because as we know, the path from, path from disadvantage to good literacy um, skills can be a long and rather winding one. The path Pathways to Prevention project then doesn't really overtly look like a literacy project, but developed as a response to studies that describes the impact of poverty and social disadvantage, particularly in the area of juvenile crime. It's actually Pathways to Prevention of Crime. <laughs> We drop the crime bit rather coyly. Um, if we think that there are two Australias, um, and we saw that uh, this morning, there's Australia of a prosperity and opportunity, and then there's an Australia of poverty and blocked opportunity. Um, then we need to focus, perhaps, of a Pathways to Prevention project focuses on that latter Australia, um, where poverty and, pa and disadvantage may have the following pathway where poor social connection and poor parenting practices leads to um, problems with children's behaviour, and I think we see that with boys, um, and especially um, in the early years of school and attachment to school. And then with poor school attachment, we have poor school achievement. The underpinning p belief then for the Pathways Project is that by implementing best practice based on research, it is possible to plan interventions that interrupt that cycle of disadvantage, that make a difference to families in poorer communities and open up opportunities for them. Therefore, we look at this pathway to promote capacity for families and promote positive parenting and healthy family relationships and behaviour support and encourage social connection. And by doing this, it is possible to build stronger families, to strengthen connection to school, um, to strengthen social and learning readiness, and improve student wellbeing and then academic outcomes. The project is based in this community here. Um, and I think, listen, this morning, uh, when we look at uh, functional, functional illiteracy and its connection to employment, I think you, you'll see that um, the unemployment characteristic of this community uh, might set off some alarm bells. Um, so this is the Inala Carroll Park area. It's southwest of um, Brisbane, but it's an outer sub suburb, and it's definitely not in the blue bit. <laughs> um, it's not near the coast, <laughs> and and it is uh, also in part of, a, of high, quite a high growth corridor as well. Uh, these are factors of risk for poor school connection and poor literacy. There's a community profile here, a cultural profile, that I think in the community itself is regarded as a, as a strength, and I'd like to um, think that this is how it could be viewed. However, in our schools, um, English is the second, second language, um, the second language users are disadvantaged in mainstream literacy achievement. So this is something that needs to be addressed. But how do the partners in the project then work together to help families in this community overcome some of these disadvantaged factors? Uh, Mission Australia uh, promotes the project goals and provides support programs for, for families um, and before they become entrenched. So we're looking to identify families and, and often I think uh, those hard to reach families that we all uh, know are out there and want to engage. We look at a holistic and integrated um, approach and, and therefore it's, I, Mission Australia has a one-stop shop really where programs where, uh, are devised based on the family's needs and their interests and, and what they would like Mission Australia to provide. So uh, it is very rich and community-based and very responsive. Uh, support comes at critical times and we looked at the not to fours and we know um, in that school entry is a critical um, transition point for families. So it's very much based around the transition point and it's also got a strong community focus 
Um, it started in seven schools. Two of those schools have closed down, um, and there are now five schools. So that um, support for families is through school, um, that those families have a child enrolled at one of those five local schools. There's a very, very important project partner here in far as schools go. Um, and schools, therefore, have a key role in providing opportunities for parent and caregiver participation. And this is a key, of course, for um, family connection. Um, and we're looking at sort of social wellbeing and attachment. So this is critical that schools um, play their part here. And there's always been a recognition in this project that the partnership is the key and that families and family support services cannot do it alone. They need the support of caring and responsive institutions like schools. But neither, of course, can schools do it alone. Schools cannot achieve results by focusing solely on test scores and working kids and underachieving kids, even and ever harder. To achieve better outcomes for their students, then schools need to create a school environment where students and families thrive. And to achieve this, they need to work in partnership with agencies like Mission Australia. And, and so Mission Australia obviously provided a wonderful resource for these local schools and that schools could refer families um, directly to them and they were prioritised. Um, of course, for school attachment, it's important for school to be very welcoming. And one of my jobs and a, a, a wonderful part of my job was to help schools set up um, spaces for families in schools and we, they were, these are known as family rooms or parent centres or um, community rooms, some of them are called. And in all of those schools there are dedicated spaces for families where families can come in and feel very comfortable. And these are very, um, these spaces are ideal for um, programs so that a lot of the um, Mission Australia support programs were actually based at school wherever possible. Um, these family uh, rooms were also ideal for one of the really very lovely programs, which are the pre-prep programs, and getting in um, families that are very um, at before the formal transition stage. So we're getting in families with with babies and uh, and pre-prep children. And of course, schools have a very um, critical role to play when we're looking at evaluating. Um, because we think we have some measurables, <laughs> when um, teachers do play a, a very big part in recording the literacy assessment and completing teacher questionnaires on school readiness rating and, um, and behaviour. And they also, we're, we're doing um, student wellbeing tests as well. And from this Mission Australia um, Pathways to Prevention Project Initiative has come a very a useful tool that's clowning around that looks at school, that um, it's, it's a computer game really, so children love to play it. And it measures quite accurately how um, happy kids feel at schools. And so that's a really um, very useful tool that's come out of this project. Um, how will we know if we're being successful? Um, and I've talked about that, the uh, parents themselves do a parent survey, um, teachers do surveys, a student, uh, there's a student measure clowning around and we also are looking at literacy results. And a unique feature I think from the Pathways to Prevention program is the partnership with Education Queensland in that um, the project can actually access students' literacy results so that the NAPLAN scores are available, we can track students' academic achievements and therefore I think you can see that this project's in there for the long haul. It takes a long time once you've got a huge database to start looking at um, analysing the data. So, but we are there for the long haul and we can track um, students' academic achievements um, throughout their schooling. Um, and when that's combined with records of families' pathways involvement and it's recorded, um, there's going to be a lot of data coming through in the next few years that we can draw down and, and have a look at and how effective this is. We already have some signs of how effective it is. Happily, um, we can see a good link between family involvement in support programs 
and their feeling of self-efficacy and their connection to school. Um, and we hope this trend continues. Um, but of course, how do we get there? How do, to, how do we achieve good results for families? Uh, we run programs uh, like this. This is the Mission Australia um, Pathways programs who, that offer group support, um, parenting, and particularly behaviour management. Um, there's uh, parent support for, and for various cultural groups that our, the Yanada Carroll Park community is very rich in um, its Vietnamese, Indigenous and Pacific Island population. And more recently, of course, um, there's migration there from um, families from the Horn of Africa. Uh, it offers craft groups and nutrition and health. Um, and, and also uh, there's financial literacy in there as well. And also not just group work, but also individual support for, for adults and families when, who are doing it very tough. The Pathways programs also offer programs for adults and children. Um, the group support uh, comes through the playgroups that are often culturally based and run very similarly to the language nests um, in New Zealand where uh, the home language is valued and strengthened and cultural connections are also strengthened as well. Uh, but you see down here that it's also the multicultural school play group. That was something that I was very much involved in and I very often um, have a more uh, explicit role in connecting families, particularly in schools, where we use the family rooms. Um, there's also a program there that's a transition to school program, a step program. This is, this is a family room at Anala. And this is a little group of little ones who are at school very early, who feel very much at home at school. So do their parents. And, uh, and lots of happy things occur when parents and young children are having fun at a school. And I'm going to take that little group and take them out of school just for a moment. Because this is the Anala um, play group. And this group is actually sitting at the bus stop waiting to go on an excursion. And the excursion was to the State Library. <laughs> it was a wonderful literacy event <laughs> from start to finish. Not only is this group very connected to school, but they are able to explore outside and, um, and find places like the State Library, which actually is very direct um, bus line from Anala to the State Library. Many of our parents didn't realise this. We're quite um, stunned when, they, when we got onto the bus and the bus driver said, don't need to pay. It was an all-day excursion that was free. We came to the State Library, we stayed, we had some time at the corner. We, the children were read to, there was a puppet show. They, their eyes, they had a ball. <laughs> um, it was a literacy event, of course, before we got here because we had to find out which bus to get on and match up what we knew was the number and the name that we should be seeing um, and to get on the right bus. And we also had maps because we had a picnic with us and we were looking at where to find, well, first of all, the State Library, but there again, where to find some tables to, uh, to have our picnic. When we got here, we were delighted to discover that the Glenala High School, which is just down the road from us, had um, a showcase window and they were showcasing some of their things. So some of the names there, some of our families recognised. That was a delight. The other wonderful thing on that day was that, that in one of the um, spaces there was a display of um, a Vietnamese display where people would... would um, could put on a little flag on the wall where they'd come from. So their journey to Australia, and as you can see from this little group, there were some, some Vietnamese um, families. I just have to tell you, we did take their mothers and fathers, and, and there were grandparents. They just stayed behind the camera. <laughs> um, and so we actually put a flag, some of our Vietnamese mums put flags to say where they came from, and we put a flag on there that said we were here and we had a lovely day. <laughs> And we'd come from Anala, so that was our journey. Um, it was a very, very strong literacy um, event. And it came from a school-based playgroup. I'm going to take you back to school just for a bit. Because I did talk about the Family Literacy Project, 
which dovetailed very nicely. This is a separately funded project, um, and it really took the families who were supported by Mission Australia and feeling stronger and had a sort of sense of self-efficacy and were able to look beyond some of the immediate um, issues of poverty and chaos often in their, in their daily lives and who felt more settled and in control and therefore were looking at ways of improving their own literacy. So this project had a much more overt and explicit role in, um, in, in looking, addressing um, literacy outcomes, particularly for adults. Um, we used family rooms again so that these families were learning at school and we used the school resources such as the computer hubs and, and the books and the school libraries as well. And these are some of the classes that we offered. Um, reading and writing support, computer classes, we talked about digital literacy and this is a generation that is falling behind and in particular when we look at this community we see that they have quite low levels of, um, of internet access and that's another uh, place where uh, the libraries came in very, very, um, they were a wonderful resource to use because we took our compu commu uh, computer classes where we taught um, skills and internet access and took them down to the library um, at Anala, which is very well centrally based. Uh, so they enrolled in the library and they, they were able to access the computers there. Uh, we looked at, we taught English lang language classes and because we had quite a broad view of literacy, we looked at um, functional, well, living literacy skills, the health literacy, which were um, accessed by, um, by families. And of course, it's necessary to say that we had community workers who spoke the languages of the um, families that were accessing these. One of our other um, initiatives was not just that adults were learning at school, but they were also there and learning about school. And that the parent-child programs uh, were another strand for the Family Literacy Project. Um, we had pre-prep groups, and I think they, they um, operated and often dovetailed with the school-based playgroups from Pathways. We had um, the parent-child homework clubs. So while it was homework support for kids, we didn't actually accept kids <laughs> without parents there. So really we were coaching parents to help their children with homework um, and, and that became a really very powerful way of parents getting some insight into what school expectations were and also raising parent literacy levels as well. And one of the other um, programs that we did was the Reach Out and Read program, which was RAW, where um, parents were explicitly included in the prep programs, where they came in um, for the first 15 minutes to half an hour to read with their child. We want parents to read with their children. Parents say at the end of a long day, um, there's too, too many other things to do, how can we make the time? That, which is why we, we caught them early. These are parents who, drop, who bring their children into the prep uh, and they're there and they might like to stay for another 15 minutes and do something very valuable. And here's a picture of one of our raw reach out and read uh, mornings going on where parents, this had a very high um, uptake of parents. We had a good group of parents um, interested right at the beginning. We, and unlike many programs, it didn't drop off. It actually uh, increased participation over time. As parents saw other parents there, and go, mm, I can do that, that looks like fun. And some of the outcomes from this I will just talk about very quickly. <laughs> We did evaluate these programs for the Family Literacy Project because it's unfortunately, um, it finished in 2010, although schools are picking up and running with it still. Um, and we looked at teacher ratings of Year 1 children's readiness for school. Um, that was a blind rating. The Year 1 teachers didn't know who'd participated in RAW and who hadn't. Um, and we saw some, some nice differences for raw children, um, obviously we want all kids to start um, to be in the totally prepared um, category. 
we looked at um, some measures of emergent literacy where the children who had parents come in and read with them um, had no difficulties, were rated as having no difficulties. Parents reported much more reading as their children at home because kids liked what they did and therefore made demands. And in making demands, the parents said, hmm, how do I access books? We found, they found their way to the library. Um, and parents also obviously reported a greater connection to school. And some of these, some of these um, trends, well, some of these measures have been done initially for the, I'm well, back to the Pathways to Prevention report um, from the early, the first stage, where we're seeing very similar um, sorts of um, evidence that the preventive developmental approach does work, that, that parents uh, reported that they felt stronger connections. Uh, teachers reported that kids who'd come through, they didn't know, they'd come through the programs. Um, we managed to match them on the database, but they, that there was a very nice relationship between kids um, from families who'd been involved in the Pathways programs with, with better behaviours, better social skills and communication, language literacy skills. Um, and some of the trends, I'll just finish here. Uh, some of the trends that are coming through are very, very, looking very promising. That parents do report greater confidence in parenting. That from being confident and more, um, with a more of a sense of self-efficacy, they are approaching schools um, more and feel a greater involvement in their children's learning. Um, and really they're ready once other problems are being solved or you get them under control and managed, then you obviously have more time to start looking at, um, at your kids and their learning and that becomes a priority, more of a priority for you because you have the time. Um, children's academic achievement is higher. Um, actually that's when, when parents are involved <laughs> in their kids' learning. Uh, the children's behaviour is better with more involved parents. This is better at school. And that we are looking at um, NAPLAN results and, and how they correlate, high, um, better literacy results correlate with the children's um, uh, scores from the clowning around, the sense of well-being and connection to school. Um, there's, a, there's a very um, good link there and also with the, um, where kids feel that their parents are um, more involved with schools and where they feel a very much better school and family connection. <laughs> Thank you very much, Heather. We're, we're running close to, the, to lunch. However, we've got time for one or two questions of Heather or Deb. Uh, so, have we got any questions at all in the audience? Yes. The microphone's coming to you, so we'll just have that if we can for the webcast. Sorry, just a quick one, Heather. The yes. raw program, um, were the parents doing that before school, the reading before school, or at the first session of school? No, they were um, in the first session of school. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so they were in the, the classroom program. with the teacher there, and they were part of the um, prep program. Just one more question. Any other questions at all? Just one at the back there. At the right at the back, the left-hand side. Hi, um, Heather. I'm from Brisbane City Council Libraries and we have quite a busy library at Inala, which is full of young children from all sorts of um, backgrounds. Is there, did you talk to them at all about using the public library as well as using the school library in that, in your sessions? Uh, yes, yes. When I said that they accessing books from the library, um, it was the Inala School Library and we used to do, well we do, excursions down to the library for those parents who haven't actually joined the library just to, um, to sign them up. But also we try, we know the sessions that Inala Library have, so we obviously advertise them and we try not to timetable our programs um, at the same time so that parents you know, might access a number of related but different um, programs around the similar theme um, right through the week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Heather. Now, 
Heather will be with us during lunch as well, so I'm sure if you have more questions for her or for Deb, please feel free to, to speak with them. What I wanted to say in closing is that I think we heard a very passionate and holistic approach to the literacy issue in the Inala Carra Park area. And it showed how programs are really working in the community, picking up a lot of the threads that Bernard was speaking about this morning in terms of volunteerism and also this notion of social cohesion. I think that project was very much bringing all of those elements of school, parents and home connection together. The other good news is there were some good results coming through. Well, I'd now like to thank all of our speakers this morning, Bernard, Deb and, and Heather. And thank you very much for your time and efforts. Also, thank you to all of you as our attendees this morning. Your attention, your questions and your interest have been really greatly appreciated. I'd now like, you all, uh, I'd like to ask you all to head out to the edge area for lunch. We'll, we'll be serving that there uh, just now. And those guests who've been invited back to the forum this afternoon, you might you'll identify yourselves if you see a coloured spot on your label. We would like to have you back into the room if we can by about five to one, please, so we can kick off this afternoon's discussion forum. So have a great lunch and we'll see you this afternoon.